Welcome to the garden on this lovely sunny autumnal day. I wanted to share a little bit more about nature therapy. I am not an expert at all. I did one little workshop in Thursday's video you would have seen. I was I was out tree planting with Home Tree Farm Charity and this lovely lady called Katie did a nature therapy session with us afterwards to end the day. Some might call it forest bathing, there's a name for everything, but it's basically being more mindful when you're out in nature. And while I am always out in nature, rarely am I mindful is something that I noticed. So when I'm out on my woodland walks, I'm walking fast, I've got music on, it's more of an exercise, physical, and when I'm in the garden, I'm all about getting my jobs done. So what can I tick off my list to then sit down and relax? Something that Katie taught us to do when we're walking is to go slower and think of your senses. So what are you touching? What are you hearing? So can you hear not only just the bird sounds, but I can hear cars. I can hear unglamorous house alarms as well, so it's not only the birds, but I can also hear little things like the neighbour's cat running into the garden. And I was just trying to be more mindful of all of the sounds that I can hear, especially the wind, hearing the wind. And then she encouraged us to think of what can we see? And sometimes, I've learned this actually from my art class, you really have to observe something in art class and something I've learned is, I assume I can see something. So I know this sounds really silly, but when you're drawing something, you can go, okay, a flower has a stem, has a leaf and you know, but then when you're actually drawing it, you realize how many times you have to really look and analyze this thing. Maybe you might have to measure it out with your pencil and things like that. And you really have to observe things. So Katie had encouraged us to look at, you know, the different flowers. We were in a field, so there wasn't as many flowers as if you're in the garden. So I really had to look at, you know, the grass, what was growing through the grass. What insects could I see? Um, there's so much to kind of see. And I think my learn was, I assume, I know what my garden looks like but actually when I was being more mindful you know I could see was there new growth um, but I was seeing it from a different perspective not the perspective of I want to get my jobs done and I want to do it really quickly um, I was like no I need to enjoy the actual moment I think sometimes when I'm gardening I love that moment when I finish <laughs> and I admire my hard work but actually it's the journey of doing your jobs. Um, so I tried to be a bit more slower paced while I was gardening today and observe what I had. And one thing I realized was how far the garden has come and my assumption of, I assumed, oh, I won't have any flowering plants in my garden in October. So that was my assumption. But then when I paused, and I looked around, I was like, wow, October is a beautiful month because there's lots of foliage. You know, there's still a lot of, even though some plants had finished flowering, they have beautiful seed heads. Um, and again, new growth on the foliage for next year. Um, now I know come November, December, all of this will be gone, gone to crisp, but it gives us that new cycle again. And I have things to more things to look at in winter when I'm going around being more mindful definitely something I struggle with which is being more mindful and pausing and I noticed when I was doing the mindful walk when I was in County Clare I was very quick to get to the top of the hill and be at the front and I'm like okay well what is you know does that have any meaning at all probably not but I just thought I would share that with you in this Sunday's video. I wanted to share my learn with you and let me know if you two are the same. Are you able to be mindfully present in the garden? Don't get me wrong, there's times where you need to just get your jobs done. Um, or do you do any other mindful practices that you find really relaxing? <music>
We just noticed I randomly have some lavender flowering heads in October on this. I did trim it back when I planted it, but it must have been like, woof, second flush. These are the hair planters I planted up, I think around August time. But what I actually wanted to share was this barrel that I planted, I'm gonna say maybe May, I put some bacopa in it. I think it could have been June. It's having a second flush. So we did have lots of rain. <laughs> Story of my summer garden floods. Lots of rain in Ireland. But yeah, the bacopa is spilling over that beautifully. You can't even see the barrel that is planted into. So I think that was a win. What do you think, Toffee? <sighs> Most of the perennials now in this side border are starting to just go to seed. This Rebecca was beautiful. And now I've got some lovely seed heads on it. Oh, I need to actually prop up this poor rose, the wind got that. Um, this one, mouse of the straw, had a second flush. I've just let it go to hopefully rose hips on top. Little second flush on Achillea, Hydrangea, Annabelle. Love these seed heads as well. I think they're really pretty. And yeah, I'm just kind of, yeah, letting everything go. But I think from memory, all of these climbers are evergreen. I know the clematis is, obviously ivy is, and I think this is as well. So that'll give me a bit of green over winter. Lots of foliage growing. Um, I noticed the two geums and actually stuff that I transplanted last year are starting to grow nice foliage. But I need to put, so I need to do this area. I was thinking of something shade loving from here with a bit of height. Last week when I was in Home Tree Farm Charity, uh, he was saying that holly is native to Ireland, but it's an under, so it will grow under shade. So it will grow under these, and obviously depending on what's above it will determine the height. But he was saying I could possibly, if I wanted to get some holly, um, I need to look and see, they were growing it as a sapling into a tree. And I think they were, is it coppicing it? No, not lifting the canopy. Coppicing, that's not the word, lifting the canopy up. So I could do some holly, which I think might be nice with some ivy. Sorry, I heard a noise and I was like, what is that? Have the kittens gotten out? No, it was Toffee surveying his land. <laughs> One thing I absolutely love, if that sun is blinding you, I'm sorry, but it's just so pretty, the sunlight this time of year. I love seeing trees that have berries on them. Love seeing like the cobwebs. As much as I give out about the leaves, because I get a lot of them. They are really pretty, especially when the sun hits them. And you know what? For nearly, well, not the end of October, but we're heading that direction. There is still a fair bit of flower. I need to look back on last year's garden videos. Um, the I actually had some growth on the wall planters. So if anyone's seen the DIY with the rain gutters, there is a bit of growth on the violas that I put in it and you can see they're trailing down. So I think the bit of sunshine that we've had has helped. The sedums, oh, I just noticed. I think I have a DED one, but that one has new growth. <laughs> the others have new growth. So um, we will just, we'll see on that one. You would have seen I just prepped this bed as well. Don't know what I'm doing with it, but I just wanted to weed out all that creeping buttercup and yeah, the last of any kind of sunflowers. And then in a couple of weeks, actually there's a beautiful cobweb. I hope my camera can pick it up. Can you see that cobweb between the zinnias? I love it. I'll probably leave all them to go to seed, but the dahlias will probably be my next job. There was, I seen people over the pond in the UK saying something about the threat of frost. It has gotten chilly here, but there hasn't been. And also just bear in mind, I'm on the east coast of Ireland where it's a tiny bit warmer, I think anyway, and the wind isn't as strong. Just from when I was in Clare and Mayo last, uh, this month, I noticed the different temperature. So, um, I just mulched them last year. I cut them to the ground and I mulched them. But I remember Monty Don saying, like they'll take a tiny bit of a frost, like with the flower heads on them, and then you can cut them back and mulch them. It would just be like if they got 
frost kind of all winter and like really 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 bad frost but there was a bit of frost last year one of the days I think for a few days in January and they were fine and I had just given them a really heavy mulch with bark and leaf mold Right, yeah, leaf mold. This is how we're looking. I was feeling really, really overwhelmed, but I am happy now. There's still, yeah, I still have some flowers, which I'm happy with that. Now, another thing over here. So I let this, it was an experiment, but I think I'm gonna do another experiment. Let me know your thoughts. So all that's in here is creeping buttercup and I hate it. And I let the grass grow to see what would grow. So in here is crocus and I'm gonna plant some more crocus. So when the crocus grew last spring, or this spring actually, I let the grass grow and I never cut it. So the crocus just had lovely foliage and then the grass grew. All that grew inside was creeping buttercup. There was some nice tall grass early around May, June, but then creeping buttercup took over. So I'm thinking, what if I sowed while the ground is warm? I do have some native Irish wildflower seeds and I have some in a bucket. I planted them too late, but just to give you an idea, this is one here. I'd say this is gonna flower next year, but there is some poppies, corn, flower. Like, I think I have the seed off this. There's another bucket of it over there. So I'm thinking, because the ground is mushy, what if I did a bit of a no dig? So I do have some cardboard, so I could cover this in the cardboard, put soil on top. It takes 10 weeks for cardboard to break down. So 10 weeks, see that might affect the crocus growing up. But I wonder if I was to throw soil on this to try and kill off the light to the grass and sprinkle seeds, would that work? Or would I have to rake and um, fork this? If I fork this over and then put the soil on top, just to try to get out, there is still grass kind of there. Cause I was thinking this would be nice as a meadow. So yeah, the crocus can grow and then I can try and experiment and see if I can get the meadow, meadow flowers that are in the pot to grow here. Cause that's, ideally what I would like. Uh, good old geranium, I'd say there's definitely a bit of creeping buttercup going on in here. Um, but you know what, the geranium has been fighting with the creeping buttercup and it seems to be more dominant and I'd rather have this pink geranium than the creeping buttercup. And also, I found a random, this, this is definitely, oh no, I think I broke a stem. This is definitely a tree sapling that has self-seeded in this pot. This is a pot of weeds. We've got ivy, that's another tree sapling. Um, and then this definitely here, I think, is a tree. Yeah, I've got some honesty seeds. And then over here, I've noticed the woodland corner is absolutely thriving. We have some, this is a variety of muscari. Not sure what it is, but it is in flower. All of the heuchers seem to be happy. The ferns definitely having a much better year this year, possibly due to the rain. But yeah, I was just coming over and I was like, this is an area that I haven't had to do much maintenance at all. All I did was I mulched it in springtime and yeah, it's nice and full and lush looking. Really happy with that. Um, another random bucket of weeds, although there is. Snapdragon, but yeah, I need to do the plant up. There's another snapdragon. I'd love to know what this is. It reminds me of um, lamb's ear. I don't know if that's the name of the plant, but it's definitely <laughs> a bird must have brought this in because I don't remember planting anything like this. So I'll have to get the plant up out and see what exactly is it, but it feels lovely. It reminds me of lamb's ear. Yeah, so yeah, greenhouse absolutely filthy. Need to clean the glass. The autumn light is not forgiving. So that's, that's for another day. But yeah, I'm actually really surprised at the amount of stuff. Like I think November might not be too bad. I know everything will start. Do you know what? It's once the really cold frost comes, then it's like bang. 
you know. But I think I've, I do have a few more evergreen things. So yeah, maybe winter might not be too bad. Also, these two have been looking out the window. Don't know if you can see a little bug over there behind the printer. But they've been having a sleep <laughs> and sunbathing <laughs> in the window. Before the kittens. Oh no, I think they might be okay. I heard some. I heard bug moving, but I think she's good. Before, in case they do get giddy again, um, I picked up some dried flower bunches from that adorable cottage garden garden centre that was in Thursday's video. I also picked up some wreath ba bases. Bases? Why does that not sound right? Yeah, base. A wreath base. So I have a couple. Sorry about the noise. I got like a couple different examples because I do have a wreath thingy, autumn wreath coming up for my telly slot. So I have a couple of different examples, but I wanted to do, oh no, hello. I wanted to do some dried flowers. I'm gonna see if I can get some dried leaves. I know you can dry leaves with some glycerin and water. Um, but I did try before and they went crispy on me. So I got two bunches of this lovely white dried flower. Then I got this lovely orange one because it's a bit more autumnal. I want to show you, <laughs> I got a pot and I think it is the cutest pot ever. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So the pot that I got, yes. <laughs> here is this cottage. Oop, hang on. How cute is this pot? I wonder will one of them jump in to model it? It's a cottage, but it's a pot. I wonder is there any, oh, there's actually no drainage holes. It's made of, I'm not sure what the material is, if it's a hard, I think it's a hard plastic, but mind your little paws. But yeah, I picked this up in the Cottage Garden Garden Centre last week with Karen. And I just think it is the cutest pot ever. I also got this one. I was getting like fairy garden vibes and inspiration when I was in that place. Because if you saw the video, you would have seen that they had fa a fairy garden walk. Are you getting in this, Bjog? Okay, hang on. This one is cute as well. It's a log. Okay, she's getting in it. But I don't know if you can see the little house on the front. So, okay, she is the cutest <laughs> if she gets into that. But yeah, there's little fairy details in the front and I just thought these two planters look absolutely adorable. Like this one might look nice down in the woodland area. I could put maybe some woodland uh, shady spring bulbs inside them. And then this one, this one is just fabulous, I love this. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe some daffodils in this, um, like or snowdrops on the roof. I just think it'd be really cute. Maybe snowdrops or bluebells. Bluebells might be nice. But yeah, the world is my oyster with what I could put into this. And then yeah, that's the dried flowers there, but I need to be a little bit more careful with them because when I was sweeping up earlier, you can probably see all the bits of dried flowers down the bottom. The lads just seen the cardboard box, jumped in, and I didn't close the office door over quick enough. But they, the novelty has worn off on it. So they were asleep on the couch, so they might favor sleeping in the pots. But yeah, that was what I picked up when I was in that adorable garden center. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Also, if you are like me and you haven't even looked at a bulb, like autumn is a great time to do things in the garden for like next year, whether you want to divide plants, um, if you're doing any cuttings, if you're obviously your bulbs, 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 bulbs. But don't worry because if you're in the same kind of growing region as me, sure I was doing them up in like November. November does be a long dark month and it's great in the garden because like a lot of people think, oh, October can be the end of the season, but don't worry if you still have loads of jobs. This is what I'm hoping. Um, I have a lot on in, Oct in October and early November, so I'm hoping mid-November 
I can just get all my jobs done in the garden, whether it's, you know, bulb planting, um, wanting to, you know, make new borders and things like that, any tidying up things I want to do. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to kind of do that in November because October's running away with me. <laughs> Time is running away. But yeah, I don't mind. It's fun. How beautiful are those flowers though? Anyway, that is me for this video. I will see you in Thursday's video.